Commissioner Smith. Okay, so we're going to uh, continue our discussion on our zoning code update. I'm not sure where, where we're going to start at. Where do you want to? Oh, I guess I still got to go through the uh, oral communications. Any additions and deletions to the agenda? No additions or deletions. Today. Okay. And uh, it appears there will be no public comment. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. Again, I'm going to read this to nobody in the audience and those people that are watching at home will know. This meeting is Cablecast Live on Charter Communications, Cable TV Channel 8, and AT&T AT &T UVerse Channel 99, and is being recorded to be replayed on the following Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed from the city's website at www.cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Scotty Gray. And as a reminder, please turn off your cell phones during the meeting. And if somebody does show up, we will ask you to sign in and uh, at the podium and tell us your name. So with that, I guess we'll go on. We're talk there is no additions or deletions to the agenda, no public comments. How about commissioner comments? No? Okay. How about staff comments? No staff comments. Other than we are mich missing our director tonight, Rich Grinnell. So uh, we'll move on to approval of our minutes. We have two sets of minutes from uh, our Planning Commission, a special meeting on June 13th and June 27th. And I don't know who was there, but I think... I need to abstain from the 20 minutes on the 27th. I have a question about the minutes of the 13th. Okay. Uh, on the second page, it midway down, it says Commissioner Ortiz suggested the new chapter be removed from draft zoning ordinance so that the council puts money towards a study next year. I don't even think that doesn't make sense to me, and I'm not sure what I said because in previous uh, <coughs> comments, it said Commissioner Ortiz expressed the need to develop our own local guidelines and criteria in conjunction with zoning code ordinances. Oh, no. So could you just strike um, the part that has to do with uh, suggested the new chapter be removed from the zoning ordinance and just say I would like the council to consider putting money towards it next year? I don't really know what that other part was. I don't think it should be struck from... I don't know. That's all I can tell you. I don't recall. That's all I have. And that was for the 13th. Right? Yes. So I, too, need to um, recuse myself from the 27th because I wasn't here, but I would make a motion to approve the June 13th minutes um, as amended. Okay, so we have June 13th as amended. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And our June 27th, you need to... So I guess I'm going to look for Commissioner Newman maybe to make a motion. Only you and I are, are here too. I think so. I think we're the only two. All right, well, I'll move approval. And I guess I can second it. I have to. So I'll second. All those in favor? No. Oh, and how does that work out? I think uh, I we'll know. have to wait till next. Do we need to wait till next? Because Ed and I are the only two here from that meeting. I believe when it is um, a tie with two abstentions, it passes. As long as two to zero and two abstentions. Yeah. We can double check that. Okay. If we need to vote on, we can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> okay. With that, we'll move on to item four, the public hearing on the zoning code update, and uh, we'll turn this over to Katie and Ben. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to begin with the red lines of the zoning code update, and then. Um, 
at 7 p.m. we're going to open the regular hear public Correct. hearing and then we'll be coming back to the zoning code update and I'm hoping to we'll get through as much of the red lines as we can before that 7 p.m. and then probably start with coastal <coughs> after um, what we have prepared for you is the the red lines in a word document and we'll go from chapter to chapter and ask if you have any revisions and then we'll touch upon those revisions and if there are none we'll move on to the next section so the first section of code for red lines is 17.76 for parking and loading and if you have red lines yes. I have some questions on it on the second page under C um, is is not is a non-residential number one under C expansions and enlargement is that throughout the city of Capitola or is that just in village mixed use I don't know whether it's very clear there let me see I thought we were making it throughout <clears throat> so all comments <clears throat> are considered to be pertaining to throughout Capitola unless they're called out in a particular zone is that how the correct so right. under B where it talks about replacing existing uses one is mixed-use village zoning district uh -huh. um, so under ex you are under C1 so C is expansion and enlargement so for non-residential units a would apply throughout the city okay so I'm just wondering is that going to be clear to people uh, if it wasn't is it was it clear to everybody else here and, and I'm the only one and if so then I'm going to drop it I, I think mm -hmm. when we talked about it it was definitely we we're talking more the conversation was focused on the village but it wasn't this is not tied to just the village so we could talk about that this evening but yeah I, I, I just think you know we're still we're again we're going back and forth from village to others and I wonder if as people are reading like here I am I'm trying to figure out in my uh, commercial use somewhere else what does non-residential use expansion and enlargement who is that pertaining to I'm, I'm wondering that as an applicant I'm I don't see anywhere where it says that so I'm wondering if we use the format above it, it was the same thing where it's broken out to mixed use and other zoning districts or maybe you just say excluding yeah, so so the way this is written subsection C applies in all areas of the city yeah like okay. subsection a right like okay. subset and if that's not clear oh, okay so that's saying. confusing right. we add language that says the following applies in all areas of the city okay. from my personal perspective I think that's not that's a little bit all right I'm good, with, I'm good with that and then my other question was B um, an eating and drinking establishment may expand by 20% of the existing floor area of the business without providing additional parking permitted expansions include modifications of the internal building layout to enlarge the dining area additions to the size of the business within an existing footprint and new Additions. So I'm just thinking, our kitchens expansion of a kitchen. It sounds like it. Could, uh, oh. could you expand the yes footprint of a kitchen? Well, it says additions to the size of the business within an existing building footprint. Okay, good. Kitchen. Good. I'm good with that. Then. And then uh, I had something on. Um, the next page 177603 on the table 17761 at the very bottom uh, w uh, the one per guest plus additional space as required by the Planning Commission I wonder if that's vague and left open is there somewhere else that gives a criteria why the Planning Commission would allow more more seat more less stringent parking Well, like when we, um, so I know it wasn't a hotel, but when we were looking at the 38th Avenue facility, we were looking at the number of employees and adding par parking requirements for the number of employees or the number of, you know, visiting um, service people. And I, when I read this, that's what I was assuming it meant. Depending on how big the staff is at the hotel, 
we could add parking requirements yeah. for the staff. And if the staff is really small, but they're going to have service people coming and going, they need parking for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So can I get, oh, you have something to add? Uh, yeah, how far are we going on at this point? Just through the whole parking thing? It will stay on the parking red line. So I had a question about 17.76.030 on back at page 16. Mixed use village zoning. Okay. All land uses in the mixed use village shall provide the minimum number of on-site parking spaces as specified in the table. So. That, you know, that kind of, uh, you didn't catch this before, but that really brings up the issue of no, so few uh, businesses meet that. They're all legal not conforming then. And if they, many got approvals based on the fact that the Coastal Commission allocation of parking uh, allowed for further expansions, but they didn't specifically have parking or pay for parking. So are they uh, are they legal conforming, legal non-conforming? Um, um, so many of the establishments are legal non-conforming because they do not have parking. So only um, so if they were established through a conditional use permit and they <coughs> now have legal non-conforming status, it really it's a mess because we had a lot of not a lot, but applications over the last several years where the Coastal Commission figures for the number of parking spaces required exceeded the number that they said we were using. So someone came in and said, can I expand my business? And they said, well, yeah, okay, you can take credit for two of the surplus, mm -hmm. but you don't really have any parking. Mm -hmm. Is that a, now become a, a legal conforming business? So what we would do is we would apply the replacing existing uses criteria that we have earlier in the chapter to any new establishment that would come in so they could continue as, as an establishment as with their legal right. non-conforming status. And well, we'd always go back to the original permit and see what was. I just raised this. And I, I mean, I know Rich has the opinion that uh, legal non-conforming doesn't make any difference, but I have a different opinion because uh, particularly with regard to financing in the future, we never know when that's going to be a big disadvantage to getting financing when you go in and say my status is legal non-conforming. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'm just raising that. But let, I'll go to something more. You can get your teeth into a little more. Well, my teeth is back there, so. Okay. You want to go back to that? Good. Well, yeah, I, I think I'm probably uh, have a lone opinion on this, but it's in that same realm. And under... Uh, B1, Mixed Use Village Zoning District, Item A, we uh, spell out exclusively um, when we change any change to a restaurant. And, you know, it seems to me as a city, we ought to be uh, looking at a way to encourage business, especially in this village. And this village is a, it's a unique place. It's, and I, I know we're just talking here with uh, Commissioner Ortiz about her travels is these villages I think are a lot of like other sea villages where um, parking is always at a premium. The parking problem has been here since uh, Camp Capitola. But now what we're doing is we're holding, holding hostages. Really what we're saying here is there's no new restaurants in Capitola because unless something happens with the mercantile where they do a change, nobody else owns property to put a parking lot in. So if, uh, let's just make an example of uh, Let's just say uh, Pacific Gallery wants to turn into a little French cuisine restaurant, uh, change their use. How could we ever allow that to happen? But yet everything is based on a parking issue of which is only an issue really, well, it used to be about two-thirds of the year. And it's really more about access to the beach than it is about access to our businesses. And I think as a city, we're, we're tying the hands of our business community by putting this type of language in there. And I, I, don't, I don't know if it's right or wrong. To me, it just seems like we're, we're telling people now that there cannot be a new restaurant in, um, in the village of Capitola unless it was already a restaurant, when the reality is the parking is really kind of a um, give or take. It, it depends on the restaurant. It depends on the time of year. It depends on the time of day or whether parking is going to be available or not. 
And so we're putting a lot on this one parking issue uh, to tie the business community, I think. That's just my own personal opinion. I just kind of have a, a problem with tying our hands. And I'm not saying that we would approve it at any certain time. I just think by restricting it in our code now, it just ties our hands to that process. So I said my two cents. And I think the reason that we've, you know, always kind of spelled out to restaurants is that it's a, it's a Coastal Commission thing. They're the ones who are forcing us to have a certain amount of parking at, for access to the beach. And so they're saying we don't want the restaurants and the, the who, who's, whose patrons stay longer than they would a retail store. Well, and that's why restaurants are spelled out, because somebody is sitting in that business longer than they would just one retail store. I, do, I agree with you. I, I'm never like the I was going to make the statement are. before I said I didn't want, there's two words I didn't want to hear tonight, and that's Coastal Commission, <laughs> because it really interferes with how we operate as a city. Everything that we're doing tonight is based on this premise that the Coastal Commission is not going to approve what we do in running a good business, a good city. And, um, you know, when we look at the, when you look at the way the, they counted for the parking spots. Um, we exceed that number now with the new lower parking lot. We exceed the number that is in our local coastal plan. And I know I've talked with Commissioner Westman about this. She said there was a different modeling. But when I, when I met with the Coastal Commission back uh, a couple of years ago about this number, she said, well, the city came up with the number and put it in the local coastal plan, and we adopted the local coastal plan. That's how they enforced that parking number. And that number is based on, I think, what the 2008 parking study was um, that, and really it's kind of a, there's really no mathematics behind the process. It's really kind of arbitrary how they come up with these these parking numbers. So I I knew this wasn't going to go anywhere. I just had to get it off my chest, which is probably so, not the only thing. But it just, to me, it makes no sense to try to run a city, uh, do good government based on a premise of, the Coastal Commission and public access. And we're not d denying anybody the opportunity to go to the beach, in my opinion. There's there's parking. But we are denying our business community the opportunity to have a fair chance. So, I, I just want to clarify one thing within this. Within Section B, the replacing of existing uses, we are, by making this change of or when any use is changed to restaurant, right. we are um, – this isn't the Coastal Commission telling us to do this. We, as the Planning Commission, is suggesting to hold restaurants to a higher standard than any other change of use in the village. Because B is that all other changes of use in the village, um, the additional parking is required to accommodate that incremental intensification of the use. So if you go from retail to restaurant, um, you would only be you'd only be required if it was say uh, one space per 240 at retail, and say three spaces at 240 square feet for restaurant. You'd be required to provide those other two spaces. So 60. it's that incremental change. Well, yeah, it goes from 60 uh, well from 240 uh, per square foot to 60. To so one per 60. So three additional spots per right. 240. So. But there are no additional spaces in Capitola. So. It, it, really, it is mean, kind of a wash. It's that whole hypothetical yeah. parking situation. Uh, we've been through this before, and we've never found any solution. We, we've complained right. about it. Mean, I mean, I still, I, I mean, I think the whole thing is a spurious issue. I'll give you an analogy. Because the paradigm is, is restaurants and businesses that need, you know, can identify their parking. And, but let's say, like, take Great America or any amusement park or any that has big parking lots. And then, I mean, each restaurant within Great America, you can't say, oh, you're expanding your restaurant, so you need one more parking space. Right. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to do that. And that's what Capitola Village is. It's a beach. It's, it's a like an amusement park. Mm -hmm. It has a big parking lot here. And, and to take individual businesses and say, you have so many square feet, so you need so many parking spaces, the whole thing just, I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. No, and, and I, I, you know you would know better than I, Katie, and, and Ben, that, but the local coastal plan that was adopted by the number of spaces, it doesn't dictate the number of spaces based on uh, occupancy type. It just said that we needed so many uh, from our local coastal plan, and that number was derived from that parking study we did, and the parking study dictated that, that number based on occupancy type, correct? 
I believe so, yeah. the different occupancy types. So it seems like we shoot ourselves in the foot because the Coastal Commission isn't necessarily telling us how to do this. We're doing it to ourselves, and it just seems that we're tying the hands of our our business community. So, having, having said all of that, we're making a change that nobody, I'm not hearing anybody likes, and we don't have to do that. Well, that's why I bring it up, but I, I, I don't know what the, I mean, we could take out this one sentence, a new high red line, but at the same time, we, it, we have to address it because of this table 1776-1. Well, how does the second parking lot fit into all this? I mean, how did we add all of those additional parking spaces we're, and, st and we're still under the gun? We're I, not, I don't see, I would think that by be. adding more parking spaces down in the lower lot, we could reduce these requirements a little bit, couldn't we? How about a rule that there are no parking requirements in the village? I like that. No, I honestly do. The only one that makes any sense to me. Yeah, it's yeah. a district approach. Yeah. Well, that's, that was park. my other like note that. here. <laughs> is this when we have a special parking district, and and um, you know we're not going to deny access to beachgoers, but at the same time we don't have restrictions for our business. I would love to see that. I, I brought that up at our last meeting. I kind of maybe I didn't articulate it right, but. So we do have um, extra parking spaces now in our lower lot that are not Just as, a handful, though. Just a handful, yeah. a couple, maybe two, three dozen. The city council is going to be looking at their in-lieu program again in the next, when we bring back, actually, um, I think part three of the zoning code, we're going to be bringing back the in-lieu for them to discuss. So that will be discussed, and we can bring up these points of, you know, the... Um, the differences in businesses and the fact that it is a district and we're a destination resort that people come to to see the whole village, not just to have lunch, but also right. to go to the beach and to do some shopping. So how can we address that within our parking but, and make it available to new restaurants and retailers? But in, in that um, example, you know, if, if there were a retail that wanted to become a restaurant, the way we have it written today is if they were to participate in an in-loop program, they'd have to buy a lot more in loop uh, spaces now that we've made this red line within B1A than they would if we were to keep it as the code was prior because now they're, you know, they're not just going to be held accountable for that incremental change. They're now going to be held accountable for all spaces that are required for a restaurant. So that is, if, if you'd like the number not to be as high, if it were an in-lieu program, then we should think about that red line yeah. of whether or not it's appropriate. Well, that, but why would you just say for restaurants, why wouldn't you just eliminate A altogether and make everybody the same? If they've got current credits, they can use those current credits and only have to step up for the incremental use, whether it's a residence going to commercial or whether it's a real, real. You added 10 more restaurants in Capitola Village. I'm not sure you would change the amount of traffic and parking. <laughs> Especially with two vehicle you know, cars. People would go to different, you know, mm -hmm. they'd share the business. Because people uh, come here up to a certain point and it's just too congested at that point for them to come here anymore. It's not like 10 more restaurants, okay, we'll have another. Nobody goes there people. anymore because yeah. it's too exactly. good. Yeah. It's too busy. We've reached the, the sort of the saturation point. It doesn't matter how many restaurants we have in the village. Okay. And I keep so, seeing you. Yeah, you? so I'm I'm very interested in this conversation. I'm he, I'm hearing sort of a consensus emerging um, in support of a fundamental um, new approach to parking in the village, and I think sort of my understanding coming coming into this is that that was the sort of third rail of politics in Capitola, and we needed to sort of carry forward the current approach to on-site parking requirements um, in the village. What I'm hearing from the four of you tonight is that you're um, uh, sort of supporting an alternative approach, which would be a big, big change. So uh, I would, I am, I think you're exactly right, and I think it would be a pretty exciting to, to try this out. You know, my question is, I think you, you're sitting on the traffic and parking, correct? Yes. And you have sat on it before, no. Well, Wait, way how, back do you when, think, yeah. how do you think they would respond to this? Uh, well, we have a pretty diverse group there, so <laughs> <laughs> it would it would be met with some mixed emotion, no doubt. But you know, the, I think the point is, um, 
I agree. I really like Commissioner Newman's analogy of, of Great America that, hey, regardless of what goes on in that little park, the parking outside maybe is sufficient, maybe is not sufficient. Now, according to our local coastal plan, <clears throat> we have a few extra parking spots. The reality is we know that if there's going to be a hotel here or anything, any big significant changes, that we're going to need additional parking. That, that is reality. And, and we can do that with our in lieu. To sell, I think there, at that, some point there's going to have to maybe be a parking structure. But uh, as a person who doesn't want to pay for uh, a parking structure that benefits um, tourism out of my own property tax, and that maybe sounds selfish, but I have plenty of parking. In fact, if we were just talking about this, if I want to park in front of my own house, I have to buy a permit, right? So why, do, why would I want to buy a um, pay for a parking structure, but at some point it's going to become something that we're going to have to get to, either through business or through tourism. We're going to have to look at that. But I, I think probably it would be mixed motions with uh, mixed thoughts on that whole thing. All I know is we've been discussing and going down the same path for how many years now, and it hasn't made any difference at all. So why not give our business community a chance and then see where we, we can, and maybe we have to change it, we can change it down the road. But well, when you when you look at parking in the village, the one thing that we never ever talk about um, when Junior Guards is going on, and it's a great program, don't get me wrong, but when Junior Guards is going on, our restaurants really get hurt during the day because nobody comes down for lunch because they can't park anywhere. Unless it's, you walk, yeah. Unless you walk, and not everybody can do that. So, charging the restaurants with parking and then all of the events that take up all the parking. You know, it doesn't make sense. That's a good example. This weekend is another good example mm -hmm. of how many restaurants we have is irrelevant to how many people are going to be in the village. Right. And they're not going to be using those restaurants. And there's not going to be any parking in the village. So I do think we need, I do think we need to have an amusement park approach. Mm -hmm. I think if we were to recommend this, to giving the example of an amusement park would be a good backup piece mm -hmm. of information because it's very illustrative of, of the concept we're trying to get to so I'd say we do it I, I know there's some apprehension of doing um, special districts and um, our overlay districts but what Ben I don't know maybe Katie you know what would be um, the issue with the potential overlay district for parking for that for the village that business and tourism could help pay into that would maybe someday build that parking structure when it you know we get to that point I mean, I don't want to just say, uh, throw out the whole concept of what we've been doing for years. And I mean, I, I would like to say that, actually. But I want to have some type of maybe uh, solution. And maybe you have tourists experience. Are, in response to you, the tourists are, to some extent, funding our that's, operations that's through the, the parking meters were originally uh, added to Capitola in order to fund parking solutions. They right. we got off track for a while, but I think we're right back on that track mm -hmm. now. And that's tourist money. Tourist money also helps the city in all of the tax dollars that are that are being spent and brought back to Capitola. Mm -hmm. So, so they're not just taking; they are literally, you know, bring, they're they're really one of our biggest uh, industries. So, but if you look at the village, I mean, our revenue is like less than six percent from our businesses. Well, you know, maybe if we don't How tie about their our parking meters. No parking meters are in there. Yeah. So if you add the parking meters to it, I wonder what the percentage would be. And fines. So am I, we will definitely take this back to City Council and this will be a highlighted discussion on a district-wide approach possibly with the example of an amusement park and the destination as a village. Um, in terms of this very specific red line, would you like that removed in regards to restaurants being held to a, a higher standard? I don't see I mean, maybe we're talking about removing the whole. Right. The you know whole. how a website says under construction? <laughs> 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 maybe we're talking about removing the table and uh, the requirement for parking and everything for business. Well, I think that's a big policy discussion that yeah, we'll, no, we'll no, have to have. It's absolutely a policy yeah. discussion. Yeah. But, but this is the time to have the discussion because maybe it's time to take a, a new look at the way we do business. But the question she's really asking is, do we do we want to have a difference between regular commercial and restaurant? Well, or not? We're saying we don't want to have any 
We don't want to have anything, so they're the same. Okay, so for now, though, I think we should then remove the red line where we're bringing restaurants to a higher standard and then also have the discussion on the removing and the also approach. And also change the table. Yeah. And what is the change to the table? The table well, is the just a district-wide approach yeah. rather than right. individual. Yeah. Okay, so that's... And the residential requirements in the village are covered elsewhere, right? Because we're not saying we don't want to have. It's a different ball game. Okay. They are. And they are covered somewhere else. Yeah, where are they covered? That's no. the question. Residential. Resident, yeah. They would be under the required on site parking in other zoning districts. So you just have to change that title so it's required on site parking. Somehow. somehow yeah, and other zoning districts doesn't include. Well, it covers both residential and public. And um, sorry. So anything not listed in table set, the first table, table one, um, is subject to the other table, which is for all the other zoning districts. So residential is in the second table. Okay. So you just so parking all requirements in the village are identical to other zoning districts. No, 70. Right now they're separate. Um, and for residential. Par residential parking requirements in the village are identical to every other. To every yep. other. Yeah, yep. sorry. Yeah. And I would add that there, there are a variety of ways to approach a parking district and the payment of in lieu fees. Um, one, one way to approach it is to identify an, a um, on-site parking requirement for commercial uses like what is in 1776.1 but allow a business when it is established or expanded to pay an in lieu fee um, as an alternative to providing the parking on-site um, so that they have that option so in that particular model to a parking district a table like this would remain so I'm just putting that out there you know, no, if, if this is an idea that has yeah. legs, right. it, it could it could. You be. could also do the reverse. You could say basic uh, rule is that you pay an in lieu fee, but you can get out of it if you have a parking space. Uh, right. I, I like that thought. That's what I was meant by district. But, but I, I put in here there needs to be, if we're going to go down the path that we were previously going, then maybe we should have a calculation for that in lieu fee for all of, not just for a hotel, but for um, all the businesses. Well, thanks for the discussion. That was yeah. I've got a few um, simpler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Simpler. So uh, page 22, back at page 22. Good. The paragraph at the top it refers to figure 17.76-1. Is that a, correct or is that a typo? Well, it should be at least 17.60. Yeah. yeah, should it be 17.60? I couldn't find... 0.76-1. So what, what section are we in? Page 22. Or do you have different page numbers? I might have different page numbers. Oh, this is 1776.040B1. Yeah, there is no one. There's a three. I see. I'm looking at the wrong page number. Yeah, so is that? I think it's 1761. I, I think it's supposed to reference the figure right below it. Yeah, that's what I thought. And if we go to the figure right below that, where it says, see where it says on the first mm -hmm. figure, 10 foot max? I couldn't figure that out. I couldn't either. We deleted that. Yeah, that's a red line to that whole figure. Oh, oh. That's <laughs> good. Yeah. oh, it is. Yeah, that's a big red line. <laughs> oh, that's a big red line. Good. Yeah. It should have been an X. Okay. Yeah, but we didn't see that. Okay. Okay. But I did have a question on this, too. So even at the 40% of lot, um, what was my note? I, I said if the, if the parking is a city's problem, which it, apparently it is, why limit by policy uh, even for residents? So I understand probably the concern is that you don't have large driveways. I happen to be one of those people that has a large driveway, but um, I don't know by policy why we would limit that. We could have it as a concern under review of building, but since we have almost uh, a majority of this, a lot of the city, at least in the 
uh, around the village is permit parking, it seems troublesome that we, we would, you know, have a requirement that it can be um, up to a 20 foot maximum. But just my thought. You know, I think historically we've tried to keep cars out of front yards, but I think we're coming against the same thing, and that is people are going to do what they're going to do. You know, they've got the number of cars they've got. Cars are they're going to be on the street. They're, the last place they're going to be is probably in a garage, mostly. So why, yeah, why do all this now? Because we know what people's propensities are, and we're not going to change their behavior by requiring garages because all we're going to do is put our stuff in the garages instead of our cars. So why make people is, park on the street? Is that instead really of it? what the, and I put what is the real intent, what is that really? The intent is so that we're not going down neighborhoods and seeing only cars parked in front. But maybe another way to do this is to allow more lot coverage of parking, but have it be a little bit more landscaped so that it's, um, it's a little bit more, it's softer and but we allow more cars in front of houses because it seems to be the way people but do your it. your point about, it seems like we could address and maybe should be addressing with conditions the use of garages that they be made. And there are some cities who do that, that your garage has to be kept uh, free so that it can Force store here. a vehicle. Wow. Why would be busy? Be it's hard to enforce. Hard to enforce. It's yeah. really hard to enforce. But at least it's there, the condition. But, but if you, if you, well, First question, does the red line remove both of those drawings or just the top drawing? Just the top. So the bottom one is still there? Just the bottom half it, of the top It's one. a new one. It's been revised it's to one. match the revised language above. Okay. So I'm going to go back to TJ's example of his front yard. It doesn't meet this little picture in any way, shape, or form, and it's wonderful. And if you go up and down East Cliff, it's wonderful to be able to get the cars off the street and still maintain the, you know, the public parking areas, but we're not encouraging that at all. Because I know it says somewhere that, you know, we can approve something based on design, but we're not encouraging people to get creative with what they're doing with their parking. And right. not everybody puts junk in their garage. I know statistically there have been studies that say a lot of people do it, but I park in every inch of space I have in a garage. And when I moved to Capitola, one of the first limits that they gave me was I couldn't have a two-car garage. Mm -hmm. And I thought, why would you do such a thing if we have such a terrible parking problem? And my front yard, you don't have, I don't have cars parked in my front yard all the time, but there are times when I have cars parked across my front yard because I have that many guests or I have um, an event or something going on, and the way that this is written, it not only says you can't design for that, but you can't use it that way. And it's a double whammy, which I have no idea why we want to do that. We, want it, we wanted to do it to keep front front of houses so, you can see, uh, front so of the that house. it, you weren't in a neighborhood of just cars, but we are anyway. So this is another thing where we need to kind of face reality and say, look, this is the way people use things, and, and let's if, if that's the way we want to use it, let's make it more beautiful. Let's put more landscaping in it and give them more parking out front of their house. Yeah, I know it's not for everybody. I, I think there was a few discussions when I my house came to the planning commission um, because I have this, you know, a lot of concrete. It suits me. I mean, and my my discussion, my argument with uh, my architect when he was telling me it was going to be a challenge was, well, I have the property. Why should I have to pay to park on the street when I have the property to park? And I don't, I mean, I could park probably 12 cars on my park. I don't do that. And I use my garage, so my cars park in the garage. But um, some people, I mean, it's something that they desire to have. It's a reality. People have more cars. We have more cars than we used to. Let's allow for it as a city. So I'll bring to your attention that um, after C figure 17.76, it states the Planning Commission may allow a larger parking area within the required front and exterior side yard setback right. um, with a design permit if locating this parking outside of the setback areas is infeasible due to unique physical conditions of the site. So 
I'm not, I mean, that gives some flexibility to say you can. Some flexibility, but it doesn't encourage anybody to be creative. And for um, large remodels, it puts the, the owner of the property in a position where they're working against something rather than coming up with a, you know, a good solution. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not quite ready to go as far as some of the commissioners on, on this in terms of front yard parking because I still kind of have in my mind the idea that a small community looks a lot worse if it's got you know, twice as many cars kind of in the front of every house. Um, I can give a lot of examples, but there might be people from those areas listening in, so I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I have a question here. What, what is the real purpose to regulate design? If it is, is it about design so that you don't have eight cars stuck in, parked right in front of the driveway of the house, you don't see the house? Um, it's an unfriendly. It's it's a it's a it's not a it's not in keeping with the character that we want to see Capitola. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, people have the cars anyway. Well, and they're, I know. Now they're on the street instead of you know. Oh. Well, I think somewhere something in between, some sort of because I, I don't want to just go just completely say okay we can't we can't control it so let's just have cars all over the place. <laughs> I think one option is to sort of modify the last sentence um, so that it. Um, allows for an exception um, if the additional parking is designed in a particular way, maybe with um, impervious surface, um, maybe with some sort of landscaping treatment integrated integrate into the parking area itself so that at least when the parking is not used by a vehicle, it still looks like a landscaped area. I like that. Instead yeah. of making the the, the, the basis for an exception that it's infeasible to, to unique physical conditions make it something more along the lines that it's done in a way that uh, is more appealing. A related question is whether or not that exception would need to be granted by the planning commission or if it would be something that would be yeah. allowed by right. I think it would be. Yeah, I think allowed by right would be. So if that's the case then the old rules that say, you know, you have to have a certain amount of landscaping and of that landscaping you can have a certain amount that's hardscape and a certain amount that's got to be, you know, growing. Then we're now, we're now saying that no matter what you have, you can't park cars on the site without planning commission approval. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't, it it says, park. required parking spaces shall be used exclusively for the temporary parking of vehicles and shall not be used for blah, 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 blah. Where, where is that now? Um, 1776040, availability and use of spaces. Uh -huh. In all zoning districts, required spark parking spaces shall be permanently available and maintained. Okay. Owners, lessees, tenants, or persons having control of the operation of a use for which parking spaces are required shall not prevent or restrict authorized persons from using the spaces. Okay. Required spaces shall be used exclusively for the temporary parking of vehicles and shall not be used for blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Or for any use not authorized by the zoning code. So when I read that, I Is was... RV again? No, I'm not talking about... I have... <laughs> I don't... Okay. I, I don't park an RV at both of my okay. houses, okay? <laughs> but I can put four cars across the front of my house right. on Wharf to Wharf Day or when I have my big Porsche thing. And when I read this... Oh, that's fine under this. It's, that's a temporary parking of vehicles. I, I think this is trying to address those dilapidated buildings park, and, and trying park to... Park cars in front of their house forever down. more, broken yeah. down cars, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that we don't so, want. That's what I think that's, that's, that's trying says, to, yeah. to do. No boats, no broken down cars. No, no for sale cars yeah, and boats for, for an extended cars. period of time. So. I think those are important limitations. I'm okay. I don't see that this is going to yeah, do I'm, what I'm you okay. think. I, know, I understand what okay. you're saying. But. Well, if you don't read it that way, then I'm okay with it. But I was reading it that way thinking, you know, it's just not going to work. I think this, this regulation helps us when somebody is having ongoing sales of cars, mm -hmm. that we get those calls once in a while, and then if somebody's utilizing an RV as a home mm -hmm. and is actually living out of it, this helps us enforce that. Yeah. So. You can do it on the street, but not in the parking 
So we're going to change uh, uh, B1 and add, uh, uh, depending on the design, design features and uh, enhanced landscaping or something like that? Right. The Planning Commission can allow it if it's designed well. Right. And add landscaping, please. Yeah. yeah. A little so you know, softening. So oh, was that in B1? Yeah. Yep. So it's just under the, the fire commission may allow a larger parking area within the required front and exterior side area with a design permit if, if locating this parking outside of the setback area is infeasible and they design it correctly. Okay, I've got another really easy one. Okay. <laughs> For this? Not one. Yeah. I, keep, I keep hijacking your system. This one's easy. 17.76.090. Um, on-site loading. Now, you didn't probably forgot that this chapter is about parking and loading. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is the nine. only provision. Oh, oh, what page are you on? 76-23. Uh, oh, I, okay. You passed over something, but I'll go okay, back. Page 36? Uh, yeah, yep. page 36. 36. Okay. So, logically, I think the way I would organize this parking and loading section is to put all the parking together, and then when you finish with the parking, Put the loading section. Oh, yeah. I said that was easy. Yep. So move that to the end. <laughs> oh, so move it after visitor yeah, service yeah, parking. Yeah. Instead of sticking it in the middle of the parking. Yeah. Yeah. The, the visitor serving parking was added as an after. Yeah, parking. yeah. That's how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so can we yeah, go back to yeah, page yeah. Uh, packet page twenty six? 76-13. 76 76 26. Okay, 26, and at the bottom of the page under valet parking, it says um, the Planning Commission may allow up to 25% of the required on-site parking spaces to be valet spaces. <clears throat> Can you define, first of all, valet spaces I don't think are in the glossary, are they? I, I'm not sure. And. Um, what is, is that the space that someone wheels their car in waiting for it to be valeted? Uh, I'm not sure I understand what a, what you call a valet space. Uh, yes, and we'll, we'll definitely define that if it's not already well, defined. I think we're talking about like for the hotel, so a business, they could come there and have off-site parking and so right. and, and, and I'm hoping that we get some kind of off, some kind of valet parking for the village restaurants generally and so we would have something for a valet but are those spaces that you're talking about for the people who pull up and give their key no they're where they take the car to. right you give your key to the guy and then he takes your car somewhere is that that is that what's called a valet space here yeah I think what this is saying is that the Planning Commission can allow for 25 percent of the required spaces to be somewhere else that the motorist does not themselves park in, but the valet attendant will move the car to that space. Okay, and somebody would have to park there to give it to the valet too, right? I mean, where would the person actually pull in to right. give right. it to the so valet? So the, the site would need to be designed or the city would need to provide for a space for, for that drop sort off of and transition pick up to a of valet car. parking. And that's number four. The use served by valet parking shall provide a designated drop off no. and pick up area. But, yeah, but in a, if there was a hotel that was required to have 100 spaces, 25 of those spaces could be off-site and be valet. Right. But oh. if they're valet spaces, then they also could be, be accessed differently. Um, for example, in San Francisco, if you go to a lot of the valet parking buildings that they have, if somebody's parking your car, then you, they don't need as much ingress and egress because they can move this car to get yours out. So it, you can you can double park. Well, do we have special requirements for valet spaces? <laughs> they don't need to be no, 10 yeah. by 20 or 8 by 20. We don't. Yeah, but that's a good point. They squeeze them in. Yeah, but it says that they have to have a valet parking plan shall be reviewed and approved, which means that, that, that how they're going to park them would be part of the plan. Theoretically, the valet spaces could be on site. They just could be right. squeezed in, squeezed in, in, a, yeah. in a yeah. way that requires an attendant. Yeah. Under the Fairmont in San Jose is a good example of that one. So if F, if the general first part of F is, this is called, this is talking about on-site, let's see, 
So you're talking about off-site valet spaces, and that's what confused me. So could, should this sentence read, the Planning Commission may allow up to 25% of the required on-site parking spaces to be off-site valet spaces? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. But what Ben's saying is you could have on-site valet spaces. Right, but we should have that too. So that's, that's not what this is talking about. Yeah. Or replaced by valet spaces. So we haven't addressed the on-site valet drop-off and pick-up spaces. What's number four? Mm -hmm. yeah. But we haven't t said how many they can have on that site in their in with it, with on-site. How many drop-off valet spots can they have? They're calling it a pickup area because it's not really a space. If you go to the Fairmont, for example, you drive in, and it's a line. Right. Um, it's not you're not parking in a space. There's a line right. that well, you're you get in the out in portico. You're you know yeah, they yeah, usually portico. have a round of you know sort of a it, you can get in by both get ways off, of all get those out of the trap, hotels. Right. You know, but that might not always be the case here. So you know, I think we need to consider that it might not be designed that way. It, it given our space constraints. So I think yeah, we, I think it's going to depend on the size of the development and right. what's but so I think we could say um, something about like the appropriate amount <laughs> for the use. I don't, you know, but I, I think any hotel facility is going to want to have adequate value. I think our fellow commissioners are onto something about what about the village itself? So let's say the restaurants all got together and said, "Hey, we're willing to do a valley parking area," <clears throat> and had people, um, you know, outside on a curb, willing to take your car and park it somewhere else to allow them to have uh, more room in their restaurant. I, See, my maybe point, that's something we need to... My point at. is they may want more room than we want to give them. I, I know they're going to want enough room, okay. but they want, may want more room that, re, that actually reduces the on-site parking more than we would like it to be. So can we use the same percentage that you used in um, the, as the 25%? Uh, can we say that... Uh, you know, whatever percentage of on-site parking can be used for valet drop-off and pickup. I think it should just be part of the design. design it has to be part of the program. Review, yeah. I mean, it's going to come through uh, here. Okay. And it's all right. So I guess I don't have any support for that, so I'm ready to move on. <laughs> no, but I think I think we're n I think we're missing this opportunity to talk about what about the village itself, and if not a special hotel or anything like that, but what if. Um, you know, the restaurants down the BIA decide they wanted to have a valet service for the well, restaurants. That ties in with what we talked about earlier. It's an alternative approach to right. what's going on in the village, and that's another good example of why we need a different right. approach. Right. My guess is when that's we when they property. come forward Pardon? and decide to do that, that we will village do village would be public property, and we'll do a new ordinance for that. Okay, there would be a new ordinance for that. What you guys are thinking. I, I do recall um, something, I'm trying to find it in the chapter right now, but that we we were allowing somewhere in here a spot for just that, that there would be a valet, that you could have um, designated valet parking for almost like a district approach to parking. So I'll put a note at the beginning to, um, I'll s search for that and try to find it and see if there's the appropriate place to put that in the code for a future. So I know we talk about shuttle parking, but I, I have a feeling there was something about valet okay. as well. It would be brilliant if that parking lot that's where the old theater used to be, if they set up a valet program. Because everybody could come and drop all their stuff off at the beach, drop off their keys in their vehicle, the valet could take it up and park it and bring it back down. Would be, I think it's a great, sure. idea. It'd be a great business plan. Yep. More parking stuff? Any more parking? Yeah. Everybody else done with their stuff? No, but I figured we were going to. we got a few minutes. You guys okay. so just don't want me to talk about the RVs. Okay? I, don't, I won't talk about the RVs, okay? I'm just saying. Um, but 76-18, um, we talked about tandem space being um, 18 feet for a tandem space inside of an enclosure, inside of a garage instead of the 20-foot length. And my notes didn't say we talked about um, 
reducing the width requirement from 10 feet to 9 feet. But in the draft, we reduced the width requirement for a tandem space from 10 feet to 9 feet, but we left the length alone. So I would like to see us put a tandem space in the table and make it 18 feet. And I don't have a problem with it being 9 feet if nobody else does. I just don't remember talking about it. Well, it's for uh, passenger vehicles only, so that uh, I think nine feet. Nine feet is a bit okay. Works. No RVs. Yeah. Get off the RVs, okay? <laughs> when we get to recommending, we're just going to split that one out so I can vote no. <laughs> so nine nine by eighteen tandem dimensions. Yeah. And. Um, Bicycle parking, and I lost my note. Is that in this section? Yeah, that is. Uh, page 35. It's uh, page 35 in the packet page. Thank you, and there's my note. Um, we had talked about creative, allowing for creative design in the design of the. Yes. I was talking more about the rack, and it only got put in under the cover. I couldn't find where it defines where you, when you need to cover your bicycle parking. But I think you should have creative um, flexibility in the rack design as well as the cover. Mm -hmm. But when is a cover required for bicycle parking? I didn't. I didn't really understand that myself. I mean, it seems to me as though most people want to cover their bikes because otherwise they get stolen. I mean, who keeps their bike out? They get stolen in garages. Well, this is bicycle parking anywhere, though, right? Well, you mean like commercial buildings? I didn't read it that way. Type. No, I think this is. I thought this was a uh, parking center for long-term stuff, but residential or what? It, Okay, multifamily developments and commercial and commercial parking lots. So, for example, the parking lot, if we were to build a parking structure and it had bike parking, that bike parking would need to be covered even though none of the cars are covered? Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, thank you for catching that. Well, first of all, all multifamily, five or more, com and commercial, commercial, like my business, I couldn't have all the parking are the bicycle parking covered because I have customers who are coming and going. They can, I mean, they can't cover their bike for 10 minutes while they jump in and jump out. Yeah. I, and I didn't understand the, it says required cover for, bi for bicycle parking spaces shall be permanent designed to protect the bicycle and blah, blah, but it never says when you require cover. So, so in, in, we're, running out of time, but in um, subsection B, types of bicycle parking, mm -hmm. um, there's the short-term and the long-term parking. Mm -hmm. And in the definition of long-term parking, it says that um, it needs to be in a weather-protected place. And so I think what this cover is referring to is that, oh. you know, if, if, if a cover, and I think that the wording could be improved here, that if, if a cover is used for these long-term spaces that that it needs to be designed in this way right it's you're just talking about a roof really you're not talking about four three or four walls right you're just talking about a like you have at a bus stop and and i keep going back to the, the example that i saw up in san francisco which was really wonderful where they inside the building they had um bike slots if you will that you you did they weren't horizontal you hung them on the wall mm -hmm. and you could lock them in their place and it was artistically done so that it was an artistic wall yeah. um, and it was really cool and and that's inside a building which means it's covered but the the flexibility and design is in the rack design not necessarily in the cover yeah. okay so we'll make those two changes we'll add uh, the creative design solutions to the rack design, and then we'll also specify that there isn't a certain amount of covered 
um, bicycle uh, covered can mean many things in terms of as long as it has a roof over it and it's covered, but we'll bring more clarity and reword the Could section on the covered. Could you also look business. at the uh, subsection A applicability? That sentence is a little hard to parse here. Five units or more in commercial and commercial. Is, yeah. What's that trying to say there? Yeah, we'll reword that as well. But. Okay. Okay, so, so it's now 7 o'clock. So when we go back, we'll go into sign it. Sign. Are we done with this? Perfect. Don't. Well, you guys thought we were going to get done with if this. We go back bag. to parking. I get to talk about yeah. RVs, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we need to make a quick motion to. I'll move to continue this meeting. Um, Just taking a recess. I think. Pardon? Try to get this we don't have to have a motion. Just a recess. Maybe now that it's had a time, have some time to rest. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you say we don't need it? I make think you're just recessing until. Okay, good. And with that, then we will convene our regularly scheduled uh, planning commission meeting um, for this evening at 7 o'clock. And we've gone through the roll call and pledge of allegiance. Um, I think I got to switch to the other. Okay. 